Hi guys, and welcome back to The Storm and Seller. Uh, today we're going to talk about the expectations of career advancement for the United States Air Force officer. The progression that you have to make from lieutenant, second lieutenant, all the way up to possibly brigadier general. Uh, first, everyone is not going to make colonel, everyone's not going to make brigadier general or go beyond that. It's pretty, this is a pretty darn good outline to what you need to do, uh, to have, what you have to achieve to get to those ranks. So as a lieutenant, regardless of where you were commissioned with the United States Air Force Academy, ROTC, or to at uh, OTS, uh, you really need to, it's important to hit the ground running. Uh, recognition at all of those trainings is very important. If you can come out of there as the top graduate or distinguished graduate of the top 10%, uh, then you're, you're way ahead. Uh, undergraduate pilot training, undergraduate combat systems officer training, undergraduate air battle manager training, uh, maintenance, space, uh, intel, whatever. So always strive to be the number one graduate or distinguished graduate. Uh, it's very important to um, make a very good impression uh, when you get to your first duty assignment after you finished all your training. Uh, when you get to that base, they might give you several a week to in process. If you can get it done in two days, get it done. Get to your squadron as quickly as possible. I can't overemphasize uh, customs and courtesies when you're meeting your new boss and your squadron commander. Uh, nothing really aggravated me more than a brand new lieutenant showing up at my squadron. Uh, uniform, wrinkle, messy, out of regulation, hair, boots, everything else. So. It's very important that you're squared away when you get there. Uh, also, it's critical, I think, that you seek out a senior non-commissioned officer, chief master sergeant, hopefully, and uh, let them mentor to you. They can really teach you a lot of things about officer enlisted relationships, uh, expectations of an officer, and uh, it, it'll go a long ways. And they can kind of look out for you and do something stupid, which can very well happen. Uh, also, study hard in the squadrons, always training, always training to be done, and I think it's critical that you stay on top of all your training, uh, get ready for your check rides and, and things like that, and uh, just just uh, really show everybody how, how good you really are. So once you make captain, you're a junior captain, and you're fully qualified, one of the things you want to do is really volunteer. Now, when I say volunteer, you want to help your operations officer out, your, your squadron commander, and um, y you know that leads to being your squadron's company grade officer of the quarter, company grade officer of the year, and uh, maybe an aviator recognition of the year or quarter. Anyway, those things help you to possibly be a group or a wing uh, standout kind of officer. Work your way into a training shop. I know they're only going to take the better guys and gals in that uh, organization. So you want to go get into the training shop, into the standardization evaluation, tactic shop, uh, maybe even become a squadron executive officer. Uh, you just need to be squared away for those kind of jobs. So now you made uh, see you're a senior captain. Uh, then now you can really compete for squadron um, uh, chief of training. Uh, Chief Stan Aval, uh, again, an executive officer, maybe up at the uh, group. Uh, you want to compete for the U.S. Air Force uh, Weapons School. Now, that's very competitive, but it goes a long ways in the Air Force, and that's opened up to a lot of different uh, career fields as well. Uh, at some point, you're going to be going to squadron officer school. Uh, you want to be, again, top graduate, or at least top 10%, which is a distinguished graduate. All of those things, if you've done them, there's a good chance you can make below the zone to major and get to, picked up for intermediate service school. Uh, so, okay, you've been selected for major, you've been selected for uh, ISS, uh, you can go to Air Command and Staff College or, or one of the other uh, service schools and you'll receive a master's degree while you're there, which should fill that, that square. Uh, also, you, uh, you'll leave out of there and go hopefully go to a headquarters staff job. Uh, my personal opinion is that the higher the better, and I've always said uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff, then Air Staff, then MAGCOM, then Numbered Air Force uh, are in that order are probably the most prestigious uh, lineup of uh, command or uh, uh, headquarters jobs to have. Uh, perhaps you need to get a job as a, a aide to a general officer or something like that. 
Uh, so let's just assume that you got a below the zone to lieutenant colonel. Uh, what do you do after that? Well, for the operations side, becoming an operations officer for about a year in the squadron is, uh, is uh, what you want to do. Uh, followed by about a, a two years, getting selected for a two year command of a, a squadron somewhere. And uh, hopefully you'll get below the zone to Colonel there and get sent to a senior service school, which is like uh, National War College, ICAF, uh, Air War College, or again, some of the other, other services uh, who also have um, service schools. Uh, let's just say you made Colonel, you didn't have an opportunity to go as a Colonel Select to, to uh, a War College. You can still go uh, uh, as soon as you pan on. You can go to uh, uh, Senior Service School. Then you want to get selected uh, for an Ops Group or another Maintenance Group or whatever. Uh, after that, you know, that's usually about a 20 to 24 month tour. And uh, at least for, especially for uh, aviators, you can get a small flying wing. Uh, Non-rated officers can get uh, a uh, air base wing or an intel wing or something like that. Uh, then uh, another thing you might want to shoot for as a colonel is to be on a, uh, be a general's executive officer or some high profile uh, staff job somewhere. Um, you know, work, working uh, high profile uh, issues for a general. So let's just assume that you did get selected for Brigadier General. And uh, at that point, uh, you'll hopefully get a large wing, large flying wing. Uh, so after that, high profile job on a higher headquarters staff is kind of what you can expect. And uh, beyond that, I think it's all pretty much political. So. You know, if, you, if your records are good, you've been a, uh, you know, you've, you've, you've done everything you're supposed to do, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't. To make Brigadier General, I will, to make General Officer, period, uh, you need a uh, squadron command, you need a, uh, a group command, a wing command, uh, need to get into service school. Uh, you need to have been uh, below the zone and you need to have been on a headquarters staff job somewhere. And those are kind of the things you need. Like I say, you need to be at least below the zone once. So uh, anyway, okay, well that's pretty much wraps up uh, what uh, you need to do if, you're, if you have aspirations of being uh, a general officer. Uh, if you have any comments or anything, uh, leave them in the comments section below. Uh, maybe things have changed since I've been in the Air Force, so it'd be great to hear from you guys on, on what you think. Give us a thumbs up uh, if you like, like the video. If you have any recommendations for anything else you'd like to talk about, let me hear about that as well. Uh, hit the little bell down there to get notifications on videos when we turn them out. And uh, that's about it. So uh, remember what I always say. Make sure your takeoff and landing's equal, and we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks, and have a great day.